Hey guys, welcome back. In the last video, we went ahead and set up our application. We implemented Dust and we have our layout. So now what I want to do is bring Bootstrap into our application and start to work on that as well as fetching data from Postgres. So first thing we'll do is click download Bootstrap. Click it here as well. And we'll go ahead and save that and open it. And let's go into CSS. And then we're going to also open up our application. And then we're going to go to public CSS and bring Bootstrap CSS over. We're also going to need the Bootstrap JavaScript. So we'll bring that over. All right. And then the fonts folder I'm going to bring and just put that right in the public folder. All right. And that's all we need from that. So let's go back to our layout, layout.dust, and we're going to include the CSS files. So I'm going to say link rel style sheet. This will be slash CSS slash bootstrap.css. Okay, we also want one for our, our custom style sheet. So we'll just change that to style. All right, and then down at the bottom, we're going to include uh, bootstrap JS. So we want script tags. This will be uh, slash JS slash bootstrap dot JS. All right, and we're also going to need jQuery. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to grab the CDN. Okay, so we'll just copy this right here. Okay, and just add to the beginning here, HTTP colon. All right, so that looks good. Let's save it. And if we go back to our application and reload, you can see that the fonts changed as well as the margin and the padding. Okay, so Bootstrap is now being implemented. Now, and what I'm going to do in the layout, I'm just going to include some of the Bootstrap classes here. Um, for instance, we need a container. Okay, so class container. All right, and then we're going to have the row class. Okay, and then inside that, we're going to have the column class. So this will be call md, let's do 7. I don't want it to be too wide because we don't have any sidebars or anything like that. Um, but what I'm going to do is offset it. So I'm going to add another class in here, call md offset, and let's offset 2. All right, just like that. So let's save it. Okay, so that moves everything in the middle. Um, now in our style.css, we're just going to push the body down a little bit and also make the background a very light gray. Okay. Now what we're going to do before we jump into uh, any more of the layout and the markup and stuff, we're going to add a couple recipes to our database through... Um, I almost said PHP my admin, PG admin three. Okay, so let's go to our database and we want to go to tables. And you can see we have this recipes. We're going to highlight that and then click on this right here. And that's going to open up kind of like a, an Excel format uh, that we can use. And we don't want to include the ID, that's going to be auto incremented. So let's create a name. And what I'll do before I enter it in that, I'll put it right in a text file so that you can see it. All right, so I'll paste this in. Now we have two recipes here. This is going to be the title of the first one. So let's grab that. Okay, I'm going to put that right in there. Or I should say the name, not the title. Okay, and then this here is the ingredients. And then this is the, the directions. All right, and if we click enter, that's going to enter that record for us. We'll create one more. 
and you don't have to type all this out you could just put test or whatever recipe one just to I just want it to look decent to actually look like a real application okay so that does that enters the two records for us uh, actually you know what I'll do is I'll save this in a file so you guys can just copy it if you want all right so we'll get back to our application we can close that window all right, so we should now have two recipes in our database. So now what we're going to do is go back to app.js. All right, and we're going to keep all the routes in this file. I want to keep this nice and simple just so we can focus on the functionality rather than having a, a complicated file structure or anything like that. All right, and it's a single page app, so it just makes sense to just keep it here. All right, so right now we're just rendering the index view, but what we need to do is let's go to the documentation for the Postgres module and if we look down here we already have our connection string what we need to do is grab this and go inside of our route right here and we're gonna paste that in Let me just fix it up a little bit okay so this will say PG connect and then so what it's doing it's going to connect we're going to pass in our connect variable or connect string and then it's going to give us uh, inside this function here it's going to give us this client object and we can actually call client.query and do whatever we want here so let me just clean this up a little bit we can get rid of the console log and then here Let's change this to our query, which is going to be select all from recipes. Okay, um, we can get rid of this second parameter. Okay, so we just have our query, then we have the function that's going to give us a result. And then down here, I'm going to move this done below the error checking that's going to be last and we want to just render our template so res dot render we're going to render index just like we we were but we're going to include the results of our query okay so what we'll do is we'll say recipes is going to be result dot rows all right so result dot rows is just going to pass in the result from this query so let's save that and let's go into index.dust and the way that we loop through this is pretty easy okay all we need to do is we know that we called it recipes so we're gonna go recipes and then end it down here and then we have access to any of the fields so let's say name we'll save that hopefully it works Okay, we'll go back and now we have the two names mushroom pork chops and kiss sal salmon so we know that it's working what we need to focus on now is the look of our page okay because obviously <laughs> this isn't cutting it so what we'll do is let's get rid of that for the time being and we're gonna just put in a div and we're gonna use a class of well which is a bootstrap class that gives us a, a gray background with a border and let's put in an h4 okay that's where we'll put the name all right and I also want a button to be able to click to view the whole recipe so let's put in a button give it a class of btn and then btn default Okay, we're going to be adding quite a f quite a few more attributes to this button, but just for now, let's see what that looks like. All right, let's actually float the button to the right. We'll add another class here called pull right. All right. Now, what I want to happen instead of clicking view and having it take us to another page. Or another route I just want it to have like a, a collapse effect it'll just uh, open up the rest of this tab 
or whatever you want to call it. Okay, so let's go to Get Bootstrap. And we're going to click on JavaScript. And we want the Collapse widget. So right here. And what we'll, what we'll need to do is copy some of these attributes. Data Toggle Collapse. We need the href and we need these two. So let's copy those and then go to our button right here. And I'm going to paste in these attributes like that. All right. So what we want to do is we need to change the ID that it points to and it needs to be different for each one. All right. If we just kept it static like this, then every single recipe is going to have the same href. So what we need to do is bring in the ID and make it dynamic. What I mean by that is we'll say uh, recipe underscore and then we'll put in the ID for that particular recipe. All right. So let's see. Yeah. And then we'll also use that right here for the controls. All right. Actually, we don't want the number sign in this one. Whoops. There we go. Okay, so we'll paste that in. And now what we need to do is create the code that um, that's going to have the rest of what we need. So what we'll do is just copy what we have uh, right here. Where is it? Oh yeah, just this div right here. Okay, collapse example. You see how this is collapse example. So we'll copy that. And let's put that st staying inside of the well div, paste that in. And we're not going to need this well class, so we can get rid of this. All right, and then we're going to change the ID to this dynamic ID. Okay, just like that. So now whatever one we click on here will match up with the, the right markup here. Now just to test this out, say test and we'll save. Okay, reload. And now you can see that it's opening up the rest of the view. All right, good. Now, uh, before we, f we, we add anything here, uh, for this button, I want to change it from a text to an icon. So let's go and get rid of this view and replace it with an icon so it'll be a span tag actually you know what let's take a look at um, the documentation okay so we want let's see this is an example of what we want let's grab that and put that right where did I have it right here paste that in and then I want to change this from uh, search to triangle bottom. OK. And now we have a little triangle icon. All right. So let's add the rest of the code here. Get rid of test. And let's put a couple line breaks. And then we're going to put a paragraph. And let's put in a strong tag here. And this will be ingredients. And then here, we're just going to put in ingredients. Just like that. And then we're going to do the same thing with directions. So let's copy that. directions and then we'll put a line break and then a horizontal rule and let's check that out okay so now we have our ingredients and directions for each recipe now we also want to have two buttons here we want an edit and a delete now we're just going to add the buttons for now. I'm not going to do the functionality because before we get to edit and delete, I want to be able to add a recipe and we'll do that in the next video. But let's just get the buttons down. So we'll say button 
and we'll give it a class of btn btn default and also a class of edit recipe all right because what we're going to do is when we click the edit button we're going to want a modal to open up and we're going to have to pass all of our attributes through data attributes and I'm not going to get into it right now but that's what we'll be doing all right so let's see let's end that button and then we're going to want an icon I'm going to copy this span that we put up here okay paste that in and I'm going to change this from triangle bottom to glyphicon edit all right and then I'll copy that button and this will be the delete button. I'm going to change it to button danger and change this to delete recipe. And then the icon will be re uh, remove, just like that. All right, so let's check it out. And there we go, we have our buttons. Okay, so in the next video, like I said, we're going to create a, um, an add button so we can add a recipe. And then we're going to add a modal that'll pop up and give us a form to add a recipe. All right, so I'll see you in the next video.